Hey there and welcome back to the channel. I'm Aryan and in this video I'm going to walk you through some things that I wish I knew before I started my A-levels as someone that did 5 A-levels and 1 AS only subject. There's so many things that people don't really tell you about the AS and A-levels process until you're a little too deep into it. And trust me, I've been there, so I thought I'd sit down, talk through some of my experiences, tell you guys what's worked well for me, and tell you guys a few of the things that I wish I could have done better if I had the chance to go back and redo my ASNA levels again. For context, I've always taken my academics pretty seriously. In my IGCSEs, I won two top in the world awards for IGCSE Mathematics and IGCSE Additional Mathematics. I had the second highest IGCSE exam scores in the entire country of India and the third highest AS level exam scores. However, even after all of this, both AS and A2 were a massive jump in difficulty. And so there's a lot of things which you should keep in mind when getting into them. So first of all, this is something that a lot of people are going to tell you. Your teachers will tell you this at school. Your seniors will tell you. Your parents will tell you. But A-levels aren't just IGCSEs 2.0. If you did well in your IGCSEs, you can't just look back and say, okay, what worked for me there will work for me now and I'll be fine. No. A-levels require a completely different style of thinking that you do need to figure out as you go along it. For example, during your IGCSEs, particularly in subjects like, say, mathematics or the sciences, a lot of the questions on the exam were based around the direct application of things that you'd already studied beforehand. A-levels aren't like that. With subjects like physics, chemistry, and a lot of others, you need to take the concepts that you've learned and apply them to completely unfamiliar circumstances and completely unfamiliar kinds of questions. You can't just memorize the formulae and get away with it. Like, trust me, I still remember in my first term of physics, I completed one of the chapters in the syllabus. I thought it was all going great. I had all the formulae memorized and then I went to doing exam questions and I just found myself asking myself, wait, was that even a part of the syllabus? Trust me, you do need to understand things properly. And I think that's what A-levels are about. They train you to think and understand rather than memorize. So if there was one thing that I wish I did from day one, it would be learning to think through problems as a series of steps, rather than just trying to memorize facts. This is especially helpful for subjects like further mathematics. And trust me, any of my viewers out there who are doing further maths, the first time you see a difficult further mechanics question, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Second, and this is really important, Pick subjects that you actually enjoy, not just ones that look good. So like, as I said, I'm doing six subjects. So I'm doing mathematics, further mathematics, physics, chemistry, computer science, and English general paper. While these are all subjects that I enjoy, one of the big reasons why I picked them is because I know that I want to go into computer engineering and I required a strong STEM background in order to do so. But that's the thing, right? Even though, yes, these were subjects that I needed to do for, say, university purposes, they are still things that I enjoy. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. I have a lot of friends who ended up taking a lot of subjects just because they thought that they would look impressive on their transcript. And then by the end of the first year, as in AS, they were completely burnt out. It was horrible. Trust me, you need to enjoy what you're doing. So... When you're making your choices for the AD levels, and I would go as far as to say that when you're making your choices on what major you want to do at college, think long term, right? Can you see yourself spending hours and hours working through complicated problems and trying to understand difficult concepts in that subject? If yes, if you can imagine yourself doing that six months, a year down the line, sure, go for it. Take the subject. It's probably the best for you. But if not, I would say think twice. And hey, if you want a full guide on what A-levels you should take and what different things you should take into consideration, I do have a video on what A-levels to take if you want to do university in the UK. And I think it can also be extended to a lot of universities elsewhere as well. So make sure to check it out. I'll have it linked in the description down below. Also, speaking of subject choices, if you find yourself doing these like really content heavy subjects like physics, chemistry, or further maths, make sure that you know that you'll be able to handle the workload. Because believe me when I say that it can get really intense. 
especially in the months leading up to your final exams. Like, let me be honest, A-levels are a massive step up in terms of how consistent you have to be and how much time you have to put into preparing for them. I came out of doing 10 IGCSE subjects before I started my AS levels. I thought that I would be fine doing six, but I quickly realized that I couldn't get away with studying just as much as I had for my IGCSEs. My AS level subjects required more attention in order to get good at each of them. So when you have a lot of subjects, it can get overwhelming quickly. But there are ways of mitigating this. Something that worked for me was having a study schedule. I know that a lot of people talk about study schedules and it can get kind of cliched, but let me give you an example, right? I set aside, me personally, I set aside separate days for separate subjects. So for example, I would be doing physics and chemistry on Mondays, Tuesdays, and then Thursdays and Fridays. Wednesdays, I did math. I didn't put a lot of time into math because I'd done additional maths for my GCSEs. And then Saturday and Sunday, I did um, further maths, computer science, and then English general paper I was doing with my A-level, so I didn't really focus on that while I was doing AS. Having different subjects on different days meant that I wasn't just randomly switching between subjects every day. It meant that I had a little bit of structure while studying, and most importantly, it meant that I didn't get burnt out so quick. And look, there's a lot of different ways in which you can approach making a study schedule, right? The method that worked for me may not work for you. However, I would recommend checking out my guide to making the ultimate study schedule, which I'll have linked in the description down below. It talks you through all of the important things you need to keep in mind, how to balance different things that you're working on, and all kinds of things like that while making your study schedule. Make sure to check it out after this video. Also, start making your own notes from the very beginning. I'm not much of a note-taking person, so I kind of ignored this for my first term of computer science. And trust me when I say that I was scrambling to revise the syllabus when my first set of exams came out. And well, I started making notes from then. And believe me when I say that for subjects like maths and further maths, the worked examples that I'd done for each different kind of question, I think I've talked through these in my GCSE mathematics and A-level mathematics videos, but the worked examples that I'd made Having them all in one place and having it so I could go through them the day before the exam made revision so much simpler. Do not skimp out on writing your own notes. And if you're like me and you don't enjoy sitting down and writing a lot of notes, that's fine, right? Everyone has their own way of studying, but don't skip out on checking out some kind of revision notes. A lot of websites like Save My Exams or Znotes or Physics and Math Tutors have a lot of online revision notes that you can download, print out, and go through yourself. I would highly recommend using them at least when leading up to your exams and also when you're initially learning a subject. Speaking of things that I didn't realize early enough, here's another one. Asking for help is not a weakness, it's actually smart. In my IGCSEs, I rarely had to go up to people and ask for extra assistance because it was pretty easy for me to pick up and understand things quickly. However, for my A-levels for subjects like chemistry or further maths, I did have to go up to my teachers a lot of times and say things like, I'm not understanding this. Can you teach this to me again? Or I don't understand this concept. What's the best way to approach this question? Things like that. And that's perfectly okay, right? Everyone is bound to struggle with something at some point or the other. Even if you're a genius, you're going to have questions come up in your head. And personally, I wish I didn't waste so much time trying to figure out how to do these on my own because of some inner egotistical need I had to come up with the solution myself. Don't be afraid to go and ask people if you need help. And I mean, if you're not the kind of person that likes asking in class, ask your teachers privately later. And if you don't want to ask your teachers, ask your friends. Make small study groups with your friends. Trust me, some of the best studying that I did in my A-levels was sitting with one of my friends and doing uh, A-level further mathematics past papers together as a revision. You need to have someone to rely on and don't be afraid to rely on them for help either. My next point kind of ties into the last one, but last and definitely not the least, you don't have to be perfect from day one. And it's important to understand this. 
Coming in from my IGCSEs where I'd spent the last few months revising and solving practice problems for a syllabus that I had just spent two entire years studying for and then topping all of these IGCSE exams, I felt a lot of pressure when I started my AS and A-levels to get questions right. But that's the thing, A-levels are designed to challenge you. You're not going to get all of the practice problems and topics that you try to do right on your first try. Like I remember doing my first set of AS level pass papers and being incredibly unhappy with my scores on the chemistry, uh, AS chemistry MCQ exam. And that's fine, right? That's a part of the process. It's a part of the learning process. You get things wrong, you go back, you look at them, you understand what your mistake was, and you make sure that you don't make that same mistake again. You won't ever be able to grow if you don't make mistakes and learn from them. So don't be afraid to try your best to solve questions. And if you get them wrong, then that's fine. Go back, revise them and get better. So as you hopefully consistently approach studying for your A-levels, try to get better week by week. If you couldn't solve a physics problem this week, try to study such that you'll be able to solve that same problem next week. And by the time your final exams roll around, you'll have realized just how far you've come from when you've started. And honestly, I think that this mentality is a big part of how I managed to get over 90 uh, PUM on every single one of my AS level exams, right? I focused on progress as opposed to perfection. And I think that that's something that you should also try to do. So yeah, those are the biggest things that I wish I knew before I started my A-levels. It will be a challenging journey, but if you approach it with the right mindset and the right habits, you'll do great. All right. So that's all I have to say for today. If you found any of the advice that I gave you in this video helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. And hey, share this with another friend of yours that's going to be starting your A-levels with you. If you have any questions or want to share your subject choices with me so I can maybe make guide videos on them on the future, then feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer as many of y'all's questions as possible. Anyways, that's all for today. I'm out and thank you very much for watching.